Hey everybody, before we get to the run through for the Aeropostale, just want to warn you up front, there was some recording difficulties and the volume level on this gameplay run through is going to be a little bit quieter than normal. Apologies for that. If you have headphones, you should still be able to hear it okay, but um, you know it might be a little bit quiet through regular speakers. The extended playthrough is fine, the final thoughts are fine, but it's just the main gameplay run through is going to be a little bit on the quiet side. However, if you want to be able to hear it with more clarity, you can you run watch the, uh, what do you call it, the, the static cam run through through where the volume is just fine. There's a link for that right there. You can go on ahead and follow that or you can just sit back and relax and maybe wear some headphones and the run through should be fine. Thanks for watching everybody and without further ado. Hey everybody. Today Rado runs through the Aeropostal, which I think is how you pronounce it. Aeropostal? Aeropostale? Aeropostale? I think it's Aeropostal. I could be wrong about that, but it's immaterial. Let me not forget about the pronunciation. What is this game about? It's all about the early days of aviation from 1919 to 1939. As plucky European you know, entrepreneurial new startup companies are trying to develop air routes from Europe through Africa and all the way over here to South America. And score points along the way for you know being the first to make transatlantic deliveries, for being the first to set up airstrips in, in faraway lands, for being the first for doing, well, just about everything. It's a big, big race, and I'm going to try and demonstrate it for you today. So, uh, let's start going. Now, at, as part of setup, everybody gets three pilots, three fleets of aircraft with different stats, there's the fat, slow one that can carry a lot of stuff but can't go very far. And then two sleeker, faster ones that can, that can travel farther. Everybody starts with four what's called logistics. Although, Jen, I tend to think of it as fuel. It's more than fuel. It's, it's you know, all your people on the ground and, um, you know, maintenance. And it's a million different little things. But it's just summarized as one stat. And Jen and I, we just call it fuel. And let's see. So we start with four fuel, three planes, three pilots. And we also start with the home territory. I'm the green player, KLM, and I start out here in Amsterdam, whereas Jen starts out over here in Toulouse. And so we actually have a foothold in these cities because there's also kind of an area majority portion of the game going on as well that I will try to demonstrate. So interestingly, the blue player is always first. So that means Jen gets to go first this game, which is kind of unusual. And so let's start playing around. You can see everybody's got a nice little summary of how a round goes. Now the game takes place over six rounds. Although there's a short, there's an accelerated version you can play that finishes after four rounds. But it's much more satisfying to do the full game. And you can see there's quite a few steps during every round. So we're in round one, and then the first thing we do is we check the weather. Or I should say we update the weather. Although... In the first round, no weather cards have been revealed yet, either here in the Pyrenees Mountains, over here the Sahara Desert, over here the Transatlantic you know, Passage, over here the, what is this, this is oh, the Amazon, and then over here the, uh, is this the Andes I think? Yes, the Andes. Since none of, none of, since we haven't flown through any of these zones, these lines, we haven't revealed any weather, we'll skip that right now. But if we had previously flown transatlantic and this card had been, you know, stormy skies, we would, we would update it now with a new one. Different stormy skies. Hey, what do you know? It's just stormy crossing the Atlantic no matter what. It's tough, tough going to make it across the Atlantic. All right. So anyway, so in the first round though, we skip the weather and now we do meeting registration. And I gotta say, this game, oh, the translation is so weird. There are so many strange terms that make no sense and really confuse you. You might think, oh, we have to register for a meeting, so we gotta get space in the conference room and have danishes and talk about stuff. That's, it's not this kind of meeting. This is the meeting we're registering for. It's basically a competitive air show where we, if we register, we will have to send one of our three pilots, that's 33% of our staff, to compete and try to win big prizes. And now everybody has two cards, a I'm not going to compete and a well, yes, I will compete. And everybody has to choose this in secret and reveal at the same time. Now, me, I think I will compete because the prizes are really, really great. And particularly since one of the prizes is becoming first player. Jen's the first player. If I can win, I could steal that from her. And since this is a race, I am definitely going to enter. Now, will Jen enter? Let's see here. Um, I think there is her choice. And so now we reveal I'm entering and Jen is not. And so that's kind of nice for me. That means I've automatically won. 
but only if I still, I, I, I don't win if I don't still send a pilot. But if only one player, you know, enters, they'll win and get the best prize. And so, but Jen, she's decided she's got better things to do with her pilots and her time than enter a silly air show. But anyway, so we have finished the air show registration or meeting registration. And now we move on to the actions. One, two, three, four. We are going to go through four rounds of actions. Um, you know, you know, I'll do an act, or no, Jen will go, and then I'll go. Then Jen will go, I'll go, Jen go, I go, Jen go, I go. So we're going to do four actions back to back. And everybody has a nice little summary of what the actions are. You can create a stop. You can exploit a stop. You can, um, you know, meeting, record, record, recruit, logistics, reorganize, quick uh, recovery, and quick maintenance. So, and you could do these multiple times. You could do one of those four times if you had the the wherewithal to do it. But I think Jen, as the first player, is going to start out by creating a stop. Because that's really the name of the game. And again, create a stop is, again, I think a very confusing term for us. What it really means is Jen... Oops, this is from a leftover play from earlier. Jen is going to try to open a line... Ah, I totally forgot to reset the board. Oopsie. Let's reset the board here. All right. Um, in fact, actually, let's go on ahead and shuffle these up a little bit. So that I don't know what's coming. Dee, dee, dee. Da, da, da. All right, there we go. Ah, do, do. I had actually started to do a run through earlier today, and I messed up, so I was starting over. Arr. So okay, reset. Don't know what's coming. Let's right, shuffle these two. Yeah, so I don't know what's coming. There we go. D D D. I don't know. I don't know. There we go. Good enough. So, Jen wants to open a and you know a, a line between her hometown of Toulouse and another city. She could open one to my town in Amsterdam so she can start delivering stuff back and forth between. But since there is such a huge push to be the first player to do stuff, to be the first player into Africa, to be the first player to make a delivery, to be the first player to break the world speed record, to do all these things, I think Jen is going to push and try to open up a line from her hometown of Toulouse either to Tangier or Casablanca. Okay, So that means she has to... To do this, she has to spend a pilot, a plane, and some fuel. It's a nice, these kind of just remind you what it costs to do all these different actions. And by the way, Jen and I, we've gotten into the habit of putting a cube down just as a reminder of what we've done because you can spend a lot of time thinking and it, and it, can, it can really start getting complex. So Jen's just putting this, it's not required. Jen's just putting there as a marker to remind herself that, yeah, she's done a create stop action. And so, first of all, she needs to spend a pilot. Boom. Pilot spent. She needs to, to spend a plane. Now she's got three to choose from. And since she's going to be coming over here to Africa, she has to cross the Pyrenees, which means she has to have a plane that can cross one line, which both of these can. This fat one that can carry more stuff and uses more fuel, it can't. So Jen cannot use this plane. So she'll use this one. She used this one because you can see these have the same stats, one, 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 which is how much can they carry, how much fuel do they use, and how far can they go. But the interesting thing is this one can only carry post. This one can carry post and packages. So this one has more flexibility for making a delivery. So she'll use this one for the original creating of the, of the, arrow, of the stop, creating the stop. So that means she picks up the plane that's associated with this, and she puts it wherever she's going to go. And with that, she'll go to Casablanca. That sounds very romantic. And so she has paid her plane. She's paid her pilot, but she has to pay her fuel. The fuel cost is right here. It cost her one. So she started at four. She's down to three. But now crossing the Pyrenees, she doesn't know what she's going to run into. She might um, have to pay some more. So we reveal the first weather card and, uh, okay, it's, it's a stormy card, but it's not bad. Because yeah, this is the icon for making a delivery. If Jen tries to make a delivery, she is going to be affected. But if she just tries, and right now she's, she's creating a stop. So this weather doesn't really bother her. So she could ignore that weather. And so she's done it. She has created a stop. She's opened a line between Toulouse and Casablanca. Now, as her reward, after having to pay all this stuff, she now gets to reveal the first airstrip. And... Now, there's two elements to these airstrips. On the left is, the, is what you immediately get. And she gets to put three cubes down. Now, sometimes there's other stuff. Sometimes she might have to pay more, or, you know, various, you know, on some of the tougher ones in Central America, she might, or South America, she might even have her pilot die. She might lose a pilot. You never know. Oh, that can happen in Africa, too. But as it is right now, um, Jen, nothing bad happened, but she does, and the good thing is, she gets to put three cubes. So now, Jen is the dominant delivery force in Africa. We're tied for dominance in Europe 
and Jen is the dominant in Africa because she got to put three cubes here. This could have said, by the way, put one cube or zero cube. You never really know. Now, on the other side, this is now a delivery contract that Jen and only Jen has access to. If she can deliver a uh, post plus a passenger to, to Casablanca, she can score a golden wing. And, you know, that's, that's a lot. That's basically four points. She can score four points for making this delivery. Although the tricky thing is, um, these planes, remember, it had to be post plus passenger. This does post plus uh, parcel. So she can't, she, and she can't use this one because this can't travel. It's a zero distance. So it can't travel across the Pyrenees. So if Jen could, you know, um, fly from here to here, she'd get a really big reward. And only her because she's the only one who has a presence in the city. I would have to open my own line over here for me to get access to that contract. Plus another contract. Let's see. But anyway, so that was Jen's first move. And to repeat, she used a pilot. She used a plane. She spent some fuel. She opened the line. She revealed what it is. And she established early dominance. Uh, dominance in the, and although we're tied for dominance in Europe. Okay. That was Jen's first move. Now it is my first move. And see, that's interesting. The first player to ever deliver a letter to Africa gets a point. Also, the first player to ever deliver a letter across the Pyrenees gets a point. And so there's this race. And Jen wants to grab those two points before I do. And, um, but by the same token... Or, you know, I, I, I'm sorry. But I want to do that too. But here's the thing. If I... Do the same thing as Jen. If I follow in her footsteps and open up my own line over here, I could open another strip or I could open a strip here in Tangiers. I could start trying to get majority in Africa as well, but Jen would definitely be the first to deliver that, that post. But then I could follow up and I could maybe be the first to deliver a parcel. But that's a bit of a gamble because I don't know what other, um, what, what other contracts are going to open up when I reveal one of these other strips. So do I want to take a chance that I would get to be the first to deliver a parcel? Because these have to be unlocked in order. If I deliver a parcel before post is delivered, you don't get anything. So the first player to deliver a post gets two points and so on. So since Jen's there first, I don't think I can do that. So I'm going to go a different way. I'm also going to create a stop or open a route as we like to think of it. But I am not going to cross the Pyrenees. I am going to make a route between my hometown of Brussels and Jen's hometown of Toulouse. And so, like Jen, I've got to pay one pilot, and I've got to use one plane. And I, like Jen, I'll use my plane that's a little bit less flexible in terms of what it can carry. And so it comes over here, and that plane required one fuel. No matter what, it always costs at least one fuel. Even if you get discounts because of weather and stuff like that, it always costs at least one. And in this case, you can see it costs one fuel. All right, and so I have now opened up my own route between these two, and here's the new contract. Ah, it's a passenger. Although, actually, no, that's not bad. That's not bad. So, okay. First of all, I get a reward of putting two cubes in Toulouse. And so now I have started to threaten Jen's control of Toulouse. I have overall control of Europe now because I've got five cubes to Jen's three. And I've started to muscle in on her home territory. If I do it enough, I could completely push her out of Toulouse and take a monopoly, and then Toulouse belongs to me and no one else. I mean, these things are possible. But as it is, for now, I'm just making an early baby step into trying to take over Jen's um, hometown. Okay, so that was my first action. I just opened up a much shorter route. And hopefully I'll start to be able to exploit that soon. Jen now gets to do a second action. Oh, by the way, I should have said I forgot up front... Um, my version, my full co commercial version of the game, for some reason, didn't come with its... It was missing the bag of wooden bits. So I'm using wooden bits from another game, so these cubes might not be what the real game has. And also, the real game does not come with Jen's nice, pretty glass um, player markers. So just bear that in mind. These are extra because I'm missing some pieces. Anyway, so now we're on to the second round. Jen gets to go again. And so now it's interesting. Jen was originally thinking I was going to follow her into Africa and therefore she would have to exploit a route immediately so she could get these bonus points for being first. But now that I haven't, Jen could actually stop and she could maybe think about doing something else. Let's see. She's got two more pilots she can use this round. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What does she want to do? 
Instead of um, exploiting a line, she could try to set a world record for speed or distance or altitude, and that could unlock new and better planes for her. And also, it means she could um, upgrade one of her rookie pilots into an experienced pilot. And but in a two-player game, there are only four of these experienced pilots. And once they're gone, they're gone. So Jen might... You know, I think that's what she's going to do. Since I'm not pushing her, so she doesn't have to be in a rush to grab these points, Jen is going to have her second action be, try to set a record. Okay, and again, I'm only using this for my own edification. It's not required to put these here. All right, so Jen's going to set a record. So let's come over here and look at the record section. Like I said, there's three types she could go for. Right now, nobody has set a record in anything. And when, you're set, when you set out to do a world record, you can only go up one. Even if Jen had enough fuel to make it all the way up here higher, she cannot do it. She so always have to start here at the beginning. So Jen could set a world speed, distance, or altitude. If she, if she, if she, I'm sorry, altitude or distance. If she, if she does a distance one, she will get a, a point, a victory point. Same for altitude. But if she does... Di speed, she will unlock a new line of planes. And I think that's what she's going to do. Or is she? Oh, jeez. See, that would get her more... Because also, if she um, sets this record, she will also get an upgrade she can apply to her fleet. And there's three different upgrades you could grab as well. Let's see. Does Jen want a point and one of and a, a distance fuel upgrade? Or an altitude upgrade and a point? No, I think she is going to go for the speed record. Now... Like I said, you can only go for the first level. So that means to even attempt this, she has to have what it says here, one logistics. And she's got it. As you can see, she's clearly got that. So that means she can go ahead and do it. And boom, she succeeds. You always succeed if you have the correct number of logistics. You can go from four to five if you have five logistics. You don't have to worry about failing. You will always succeed. But there is some randomness to it because we've got this special... Um, zero, one, two die. That's all it's got is zeros, ones, and twos on it. You know, um, two of each. You know, so you got a 30% chance of a zero, a one, or a two. You get to roll this now. And the higher you roll, the better you do. So Jen wants to roll a one or a two. And okay, perfect. She rolled a two. Now that means she takes, a, she takes her cost of one, subtracts two, and that means, well, you can't go into negatives, but zero. That means if Jen had rolled a zero, she would have had to pay the one logistics. But if she rolled a 1 or a 2, that means she got this world record for free. So she didn't have to spend anything. So that was actually very, very good. So she got a little bit lucky. And her reward is she gets a new type of plane. She gets this upgrade to her existing fleet. And, she, and the pilot who she had sent out to do this, he gets upgraded into an experienced pilot. And these guys are very, very valuable. Um, you need them... First of all, only experienced pilots can fly in South America. Experienced and legendary pilots. Rookies can't do it. And so Jen's just gotten 25% of all the experienced pilots in the game. That's a pretty big deal. If you can monopolize these, that means you can kind of monopolize South America. Um, but in, in the process of doing that, Jen has put a new rookie on the market waiting to be hired. Okay, so Jen got a, an upgraded pilot and she gets a new type of plane to add to her fleet. And she can upgrade one of her existing types to be able to carry more stuff. That's what this upgrade is. And I think she'll put it on her fat, slow one, who can't go very far. So now, this can carry... Or will she? No, hold on a second. What does she want to do? That one's really expensive. Let's put it on... Well, see, you can see these three have... You know, this is post uh, passenger. Post, which is used up, and post parcel. Let's uh, do... Well, Jen knows she's got a, a contract here for post parcel, so that's pretty nice. Let's upgrade this brand new fleet of ships she's got. So her post, or I'm sorry, not post and parcel, post and passenger, that's what these two icons are. This fleet of planes used to only be able to carry one item, now it can carry two. And that means Jen is capable of completing this contract. Which is very, very nice because, remember, this contract's worth of gold. The, her other flights could not have done it because um, this one could have delivered a passenger, but it couldn't cross the Pyrenees. This one can cross the Pyrenees and deliver. So that worked out really well for Jen. That is perfect. That is exactly what she needed. And so that was her second action. She set a world record. And now it's my second action. And now I've got a tricky thing. I can see how perfect that is for her and how that allows her to complete this thing. And that's going to be a huge score. So, I've got an interesting choice. I could, if I wanted to, 
beat her world record. I could spend some resources and beat her world record and take that bonus away from her and then she wouldn't be able to fulfill this contract. And this is a very cutthroat game. You always have to be paying attention to what your opponents are doing and you can't just let them have free reign on lucrative contracts. So I could prevent Jen from being able to do that contract by beating her world record. And then I would get that bonus, I would get an upgraded pilot, and I would get a very cool plane indeed. My uh, Fokker Vila 3M. Wouldn't that be nice? But on the other hand, Jen has done something else. Remember, she ended up putting another... There is now another rookie pilot that could be hired. And I could recruit him. Quit recruit a pilot, and it's free. It's just sitting here. Jen gave him to me. And suddenly now, I've got three pilots. And that's a huge deal. I've got more pilots than Jen. And if I don't grab him, Jen might, because he's just sitting there waiting to be recruited. So, but if I, if I recruit him, then that means I give Jen time to use this new flight and get the really lucrative contract. Ah! Those are, I should do both of these things, but I have to choose. Do I want Jen to score four points off that contract? So that I can get a free extra pilot and that'll give me a lot more flexibility. Because remember, I've got to commit one of my pilots. I still have to do it. I have to commit a pilot to this air show if I want to win the air show. And here's the other interesting thing too. I said this game is cutthroat. I'm not kidding. When you do the recruit action, you can take rookies if they're up here, but often there are none. It's only every once in a while when one of them pops up and somebody wants to grab them really quick. You can also poach rookies from another player. I could poach one of Jen's ready rookies who isn't you know, committed to anything if I have more logistics than her. So if I had, you know, she's got three. If I had four logistics, I could spend one so that my logistics equals hers and I could steal her own pilot. So that's really interesting too. I could grab this pilot, but Jen might, you know, might poach it from me later. But still, a freebie pilot... Yeah, I'm going to get plenty of opportunities to have nice, lucrative contracts, too. By the way, oops, where's my contract here? I should have revealed a contract over here. Where'd I put it? Have I lost it? There was a contract here and a contract here. Oh, yeah, it was, because it told me that I could put two cubes, and it has disappeared now. I had no idea where that contract... Oh, here it is. Oh, as I was looking at right. So I've got a contract here, although it's a contract that gets me two bronze wings, which is only two points, but it's a pretty easy contract to make. So, you know, I think I'm going to leave Jen her contract and I'm going to, my second action is going to be to recruit and grab that newbie. Oh, look at that. I've got a lot of pilots now. Okay. So that was my second action. Moving on to the third. And now Jen is going to act before I could steal her bonus by breaking her world record. Jen is going to make a delivery, which means her last pilot. And see, this is why she did not want to commit to the air show, because if she had, she wouldn't have been able to use all her pilots to actually do other stuff. So she's committing her last pilot and she's going to have to use a flight. She's going to use this brand new one, her new flight that's all upgraded, and she is going to fly it from Toulouse over here to Casablanca. All right? So now remember, do, or I haven't done this. This is the first time I've exploited. I'm exploiting a route or a stop. So when you exploit, you have to choose. Where are you going to start? Where are you going to end? Because you can only fulfill the contracts where you end up. And Jen wants to fulfill this contract because that's going to be a really big deal for her. So she's flying from here to here. And she had to use a pilot. She had to use a plane. And she has to pay one logistics, one fuel. And now you'll notice she's making a delivery here. That's what this icon is. So she will have to pay the penalty of this weather. But I'll come back to that in a second. All right. So she's, she's paid everything she needed to do. This thing could have said she needs to pay extra fuel, but it doesn't. So she'll come back to that in a second. She's made her delivery. What is she delivering? A post and a passenger, which she can do with this plane. And what's her reward? She just scored a gold wing, which is worth four points. All right, and she, it goes here on her score track. Four points, very, very nice. And she's pretty much used up all her pilots and half of her overall fuel. All right, and oh, but, right, there's more. Normally, when you make a delivery, when you fulfill a contract, for every contract you fulfill, you get to put another cube in the destination city. But... That's where this penalty comes in. This penalty says, uh-uh. Uh, when you're fulfilling contracts, you get to put less, one less cube 
on the table. So normally Jen would have gotten to put a cube here to increase her influence in Casablanca even further. But as it happens, because of the weather, she couldn't do that. But Jen is the first player to deliver a letter across the Pyrenees. So she just got that. She is the first player to deliver a letter to anywhere in Africa. So she just picked up that as well. She just got six points. Now, remember, she also delivered a passenger, but you can't score the passengers until after you score the parcels. So Jen, unfortunately, did not get to score two extra points for having... So somebody, either her or me, will have to deliver a parcel before she can sell those. So, very lucrative. Jen scored six points. She, unfortunately, didn't get to exert more influence, but still, that was a pretty nice... And I should say, by the way, we are racing to score four bronze, three gold, one... Platinum and one diamond. The first player to do that wins the game. Alternatively, when we get to the end of six rounds, whoever has the most points wins. But um, right now, we're racing to score points, and Jen's in the lead with six points. That was her third action, and now it is my third action. And now, I could go on ahead and break her world record, but it's too late. Too late. Okay. But I think I am... Well, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to stop right there because I've shown you a lot of the basics. Uh, if you want, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes, go to the extended playthrough, and I'll finish this round, and maybe I'll finish the whole second round so you can see some more stuff, opening up more areas. I don't think by the second round I will have... It's very unlikely that you can make it all the way over here. You could, but it's a crazy push, very expensive. But we'll do our end-of-round world domination scoring. There's a bunch more stuff, but if you'd like to see that, hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes to go to extended play or final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.